Let's take a look at some charts on XRP from this week's article on Brave New Coin. So it's hard to justify Ripple's existence as a token, just off the bat. So as I'm writing this and looking for information on Ripple, there's a struggle between, is this information relevant to Ripple the company? Is it information relevant to Ripple the token? Should I even be writing the article at all? Is simply talking about something that shouldn't exist promoting it, its existence? All these sorts of thoughts flow to my head. So when I look at the market cap for Ripple, it's 100% pre-mined coin, which means all the coins were created in an instant out of nowhere on the initial genesis. So to say that it has X billions based on a percentage of the supply that's unlocked, I mean, it gets really murky. It's not as cut and dry as there are coins created every so often. Those coins are bought and sold in an open market. In XRP's case, we have a company that controls and benefits from most of the supply. That's just how it works. We can talk about how Ripple, the company, hasn't had any programmatic sales, but they've had direct institutional sales from Ripple, the company, to whomever. And then they can say, okay, well, this is only a small percentage of the total volume based on their volume calculations. I question the volume calculations that they come up with because I don't know which exchanges they're using. I don't know if the exchanges they're using are real volume or fake volume. So again, it's hard to look at any of this at face value and say with confidence, this is bullish or bearish. This is good or bad. It's great if you're Ripple, the company, you're making bank, right? You got Ripple to burn. You got millions, millions of Ripple to burn. And we can look at how much they own. They own 6 billion still, 6.3 billion. The programmatic escrow, which they will tell you they do not have control of, but benefit directly from the sales of programmatic escrow. This doesn't, selling this doesn't go back to the community. It goes to Ripple, the company. So I, it's it's hard to see how Ripple isn't a security anyway. Like that's irrelevant if you're juggling with the fact that Ripple just shouldn't exist at all. <laughs> In many people's minds, it exists purely to enrich the people at Ripple. So if you're looking at this again, as 100% pre-mined coin, and you're saying to yourself, all right, there's 45% in circulation, the rest of it, 55%, 54%, is going to be slowly dumped over the next five to 10 years, 20 years, 60 years, whatever it is. At the very minimum, buying interest has to exceed this selling, as with anything, supply and demand. Something else to consider is that, oh, Jed McCaleb, the guy who was part of the creating team for Ripple, is selling basically his share of Ripple on Bitstamp. I'll show that in a second. At least I think that's what's going on in Bitstamp. And oh, by the way, he's got millions of tokens to sell and it's going to take him a long time to do it. So you have to exceed Jed McCaleb's selling. You have to exceed Ripple's selling and you have to exceed the programmatic escrow selling. Now this programmatic escrow, how it works is a billion comes out each month. Anything that isn't sold is put back into escrow. So it's not like it's just wantonly dumped on the market, but it is available supply to be bought. If you look at the network itself, they upgraded to 1.6, I think a month or more ago, and many of the nodes still haven't upgraded. My guess is, as with any network, when there's an upgrade, the first few nodes that get upgraded are controlled by either the main validator of the network themselves, or are all controlled by cloud hosting. So this isn't the best example at the moment because it's been a month since 1.6 got released but to see all these old nodes upgraded these are probably the organic nodes that are people or entities that are not ripple not cloud hosting potentially so it's always interesting to see especially with a coin like ripple that has frequent updates how often are those nodes updated after the update that's always interesting to watch for if we look at transaction counts and fees ripple has the lowest fees among any chain which is great if you're a method of transaction. Transaction counts have really been stale since 2018. Uh, this stuff up here is all just spam attack, as was probably this stuff up here. Anything that is spiky and not lasting, volatility and transaction counts, stuff like that, isn't typically organic people activity, it's typically bot activity. But fees continually go down since 2018, which is great. If you're transacting Ripple, one thing you can always do if a network is expensive or stuck, like ETH was a few weeks ago, 
you can sell everything to Ripple or any other token LTC and send it to where you need to send it via Ripple and then, and then buy your ETH back again. Uh, this creates two taxable events if you're in the US, so it's not exactly the best method, but it is a method if you're in a bind. Looking at active addresses and transaction sizes, again, stale since 2018. This stuff is, again, exemplifying the bot or spam activity that occurred. So the more recent stuff probably is legit because active addresses didn't go insane. And average transaction sizes haven't really changed since 2019, which more or less tells me that uh, the use of the chain itself is relatively low. Looking at NVT, now here's a little secret about me. I really don't like NVT at all. <laughs> I don't use it for anything. I really just include it in the article because people were asking about it for all the coins. And it's interesting to look at, but to use it as information on trading isn't for my, it's not my cup of tea. Uh, so to see Ripple's NVT continually declining is bullish in a vacuum. But if you exclude the programmatic escrow transactions and all the transactions done on Ripple on the company's side as far as selling, I mean, this this would probably look a lot different. And this shouldn't really follow price per se. So if activity on the network is increasing and price is decreasing, you should see, you should see NVT decreasing, but you think it'd be decreasing more than it is, I guess. I don't know. Like none of this makes sense for Ripple at all. Um, but this says in a vacuum that the market cap has not priced in on-chain activity. On-chain activity, which includes programmatic escrow, large transactions moving every month, that sort of thing. So this will falsely be low and not include what I consider organic people activity. Just the one other reason not to use it. Now, this is one of the GitHubs, one of the main GitHubs. They're still doing development, which is more than you can say about certain coins like EOS, perhaps, at least on the GitHub where the activity is light, but they're definitely still working on Ripple, another one of their GitHubs. It's always good to look at, you know, you don't need to understand coding. You don't need to understand commits on GitHubs. You can say that commits are useless for everything and they don't mean anything. And they're just like changes on a Google doc. Who cares? But to me, if I see activity or no activity, it's binary. Activity, good, cool. If I see something like Tron where it's obviously fake and there's thousands of commits at any given time, you know, you, you discount that stuff. But when you see stuff like Ripple, you're like, okay. At least they're they're working on it. They're doing stuff. It's being developed on. That's all I need to know, really, as a as a trader. Looking at Google Trends, it has been flat as a pancake since 2018, and this isn't really a surprise because price has really done nothing since 2018. It's kind of just been flat and down since the all time high. You'll see things like Tezos, where Google Trends is spiking. Link. Google Trends is spiking as price is hitting all-time highs. So this isn't really a surprise. These tend to go hand in hand here. Just zooming in on the last two years, we're basically at an all-time low, not all-time low, but a multi-year low for uh, Google Trends here. Just nobody nobody talking or looking at Ripple for any reason, really. In the press, in the news, in the Googles, in the searching. Flipping to technicals, we have Bitfinex long shorts, which have been essentially flat. This is always good to look at when they are heavily long or heavily short because typically these positions get squeezed meaning price goes in the opposite direction that the open interest wants them to go so just as open interest was hitting a net long all-time high price went down so they got squeezed there was a mini squeeze here as well with the march drop so it's always good to check these out not necessarily use them as tradable information solely but to just get a gauge of market interest Yearly pivots, 5,200 EMAs, which are about to cross bearish. And when it crosses bearish on Ripple historically, it's been a multi-month bear trend uh, here, here. So there's really been very little bull trend at all since 2018. It's essentially just been, like I said, down and sideways. Uh, VPVR volume. This is the Jed McCaleb that I see. You don't see this volume on the USD pairs for any other exchange, really. And it's Bitstamp, so I know it's real volume. It's not fake volume. So that really catches my eye that, uh, you know, who's got this amount of Ripple to buy and sell? <laughs> um, so it's either Ripple the company transacting here or Jed McCaleb or both. My guess is Ripple the company may be trying to counteract Jed's selling here. I, I don't know. Just I'm just 
trying to game theory it out as far as what, what all this volume is, but almost certainly the selling is Jed McCaleb. Look in our side, there's no bull or bear divs here. Uh, the big thing to watch is just this BPVR zone at 20 cents. That's where most of the volume has been, 2025. 20, in that range between the previous consolidation and then all this volume recently since 2020 on stamp. There's really no support pivot until 075, which is a yikes if you're a holder. Uh, plenty of resistance pivots on the way up. Cloud also doesn't like this as far as the bull trend. It still is a bullish cloud, but it's going to flip bearish here. Almost assuredly in a couple days, TK Cross is C clampy, meaning they're not, the TK lines are not close together. So I wouldn't expect this to go much further down in the near term until these moving average type lines meet each other again. The Kiju needs to come down a bit. So if the Kiju is back at price, and we're still not above the cloud, then I expect further down. But at this moment, just as you did here in the last article I wrote, I talked about uh, TKC clamp. At, when you see that, you expect price to return to the mean. So the mean is either going to stay high and price will come back to it, or the mean will drop to price, giving it permission, essentially, to continue its descent. Lastly, looking at XRP BTC. Again, it's been mainly bare since 2019 with really no recovery. You know, it's flirted with some 200 EMA breakouts, flirted with some VPVR resistance breaking. But when you when I see a chart like this, all I'm looking at is the range, right? You, you got your 2,800 sats, you got your 1,100 sats. It's got to make a decision. And until it makes a decision, there's no reason to trade it because it can just keep ranging. You can say, all right, there's a falling wedge here. You can finagle all sorts of patterns into this, but really it's about the range. If there's sellers up here and there's buyers down here, why, why touch it until the range breaks? Really, 3K sats is the alert level as far as additional upside. At that point, it'll be above the VPVR level. It'll be above the 200. It'll, it'll be above the cloud. So I like the 3K sats to 5K sats trade. To the next yearly pivot but until then i don't think it's a strong avoid strong sell fundamentally for me i just avoid it at all costs unless there's some obvious trade setup so really ripple's existence is just a big question mark just in general 